McHale Center here on the campus of the University of Arizona where the Arizona Wildcats are playing the fourth-ranked Iowa Hawkeyes and giving them a run for their money. The score, 20 to 19. Arizona is down by one. 10.34 remaining in the first half. I'm James Brown along with Bill Raftery, and we expected an up-and-down game, and that's exactly what we've had. That's a seven-footer, Brad Lowhouse. The press sort of ignited Arizona, but in effect, it has tired some of their A players out. Sean Elliott out for a rest. I don't know if they can keep up the pace, James. Iowa, known as a run-and-shoot ball club, plays nine or ten ball players a game. Arizona trying to play the same type of game, and it's worked well thus far. The question is, Coach Raftery mentioned whether or not it will take its toll on Arizona. From the corner, Rod Bushler with the miss. B.J. Armstrong pushing the ball up the court for Iowa. Armstrong is off the mark, but a foul. We're waiting to see who the official whistled the foul against. The starting lineup for the Iowa Hawkeyes, Brad Lohas, a seven-foot forward, Roy Marble, the team's leading scorer, and strong Ed Horton in the middle. B.J. Armstrong and Kevin Gamble are in the backcourt. And the foul was whistled against Tom Tolbert, his first personal foul. Into the ball game for Iowa, Jeff Moe. So the backcourt is now Jeff Moe and B.J. Armstrong. Along the front line, Ed Horton, Kevin Gamble, and Brad Lojas. Jeff Moe, excellent outside shooter. Good alley-oop. Great alley-oop pass to Brad Lojas, the young man from Phoenix, Arizona, scores his fourth point of the ball game. Normally a perimeter shooter. Coach Tom Davis moving down low, and he's paying dividends. Well, that's against their zone. Uh, their zone offense is such where they'll end up out and cut down along the baseline. Harvey Mason, the freshman, with the long shot off the mark, rebounded by Judd Bushler. Judd Bushler, Harvey Mason, Tom Tolbert, Joe Turner, and Craig McMillan, the starting five for Arizona. Arizona, a very young ball club. Coach Olsen said he wanted to go right at Iowa and play as many players as possible playing their game. 1-2-2, two, two. Bushler from the corner. Got to make those. They've had a lot of open shots early. Haven't been able to convert. The last six shots, Great Arizona look. has not been able to make. B.J. Armstrong, head up, looking down the floor. That's the six point for Ed Horton. Good, strong move, James. Craig McMillan, again, the press. It's got Arizona going a little bit. They're able to get it over the top and actually end up with a fast break at the end of it. Ed Horton, big, strong player for the Big Ten Hawkeyes. Uh, we were teasing about not missing many meals. He can run the floor with the little guys. That particular time, Kevin Gamble ended up at the front of the pack, and Armstrong with the head up making a nice-looking pass. Craig McMillan, an excellent free throw shooter, has made 28 of his last 29. And he continues the string. McMillan, a junior from Cloverdale, California, with his third point of the afternoon. Of course, he teamed with Steve Kerr. Great outside shooting. Lofton now starting, doing an excellent job for this Arizona club, getting more confidence in that point position. Three-point ball game, Iowa on top. 8-14 remaining in the first half. Jeff Moe launches it off the mark. Lojas, good pump fake, and Lojas at seven feet tall is starting to display some strength on the inside, and a big knock against him was that he wasn't very physical. Moe so cocky, I'm sure he thought that was a pass. Anthony Cook, Sean Elliott, Tom Tolbert, Craig McMillan, and Ken Lofton, the starting five for Arizona as Arizona loses the ball out of bounds. A bad pass, actually, from Tom Tolbert. Well, when Tom Davis was at Boston College, his pressure used to gnaw away. He might not get something out of it early, but eventually, he'll cause you to make mistakes. That time, Arizona had a player deep, chose to throw it to McMillan. They were ready for it. Team's leading scorer, Roy Marble, back into the ball game, replacing Jeff Moe. Moe, one of the most active, aggressive six men in all of college basketball. Marble inside, pass too hard for Brad Lojas. Sean Elliott, 6'8 sophomore, over to Tolbert. Uh, junior college, Cerritos. A 
Defensively against Oregon, he had a big night. He had 20 on Thursday. Very offensive-minded. Reminds me of you. <laughs> Only mine were from the corner, deep corner. Roy Marble along the baseline. Good pass. And the foul is going to be whistled against Craig McMillan. McMillan's first personal foul. And Coach Lute Olsen can't understand why the foul was whistled so quickly there. Of course, the Wildcats of Arizona expecting a very physical ball game. They were expecting maybe action to be called a little looser. It's a three-point ball game. Iowa on top. Hale Center in support of their Arizona Wildcats who are playing the Iowa Hawkeyes close. Only a three-point ball game with 7.27 remaining in the first half. And Lute Olson in his fourth year here at Arizona. Very, very successful coach. But as most coaches are, they're fairly superstitious and we'll tell you why in just a few moments. He's, all coaches have idiosyncrasies. Lute likes his popcorn. He's got a piece of the concession here. But that's how they relax. <laughs> Press the goal by Gamble. And I needed something a little stronger with my club before the ball game. Of course, you're talking about Gatorade. <laughs> Kevin Gamble with that last basket for Iowa, his ninth point in the first half, putting Iowa on top by 6, 29, 23. The biggest lead of the ball game. It's been nip and tuck most of the way. Craig McMillan brings it back down. If he can do that and Sean Elliott, it'll really force the zone out. Tom Davis likes to pack it in. He'll chance the outside shot. Two, three zone by the Wildcats. DJ Armstrong back out to Kevin Gamble. He loves to throw him up from long. Horton out in muscles the front line of Arizona, but Kenny Lofton, the quickest man on the floor, comes up with the ball. He's going to have to do more of that. Lofton and more of that. Twenty-nine, twenty-nine ball game. The seventh tie in the first half. Wildcats are anxious to redeem themselves. Well, the guards are going to have to rebound, James, as Lofton did. He's got nice range. He's very quick with the dribble. Marble inside to Horton. Big, strong move. And they're going to call a charging foul on Ed Horton. And his game is anything but finesse. Power. We talked to Heat, Gamble, and Marble, and we asked the difference between the Big Ten and the Pac-10. It's power basketball. Marble and Gamble said it's tougher. He said there's nothing to it. That's strength. They said, we don't have your body. <laughs> Not too many people have the body. He loves the physical play. Of Ed Horton at 6'8", 225. Into the ball game for him now is Gary Wright. Nice touch pass. Strong move by Tom Colbert. difficult McHale Center is to play in. They're getting some idea of it now. They're acting as a six men, the fans here, pushing Arizona on an 8-0 run. Those are the type of rebounds they must come up with. They're going to get punished if they don't. Gary Wright goes up. Sir Jamalot. That's his nickname, <laughs> Sir Jamalot. Even with the left hand that he broke three bones in, he slams it home strong. He made a nice cut, though. Good return pass. Six points for Gary Wright, the eighth tie of the ball game. And Anthony Cook, not alert for that pass. Oh, oh shot blocked. Cook. That's the third blocked shot of the first half by Anthony Cook, who last year set a team record with 50. Excellent reaction. He'll get more than 50 this year. Here, he never stopped running. Got himself set. McMillan helped underneath. Quick to the basketball. You're right, Coach. He is set to surpass that mark. He's got 41 blocks on the year so far. Third personal foul on Gary Wright, and the big men for Iowa are getting in foul trouble. Ed Horton. 
Gary Wright. Both big men have three personal fouls here in the first half, and we've got 4.52 yet to play in the first half. Some discussion amongst the free, the officials about the foul. And you take a look at Gary Horton. He loves the physical stuff, but right now he's relegated to the bench. Arizona. It appeared to be their game plan, Coach, to go inside to try and draw some of the big men for Iowa into foul trouble. Actually, I think some of the fouls are on the other end as well. They're aggressive, rebounding. Don't forget, Pac-10 officials calling it a little closer than perhaps Iowa is used to. Iowa with six team fouls, Arizona with five. And Anthony Cook is going to get fouled from behind by Jeff Moe. That was a little wrinkle on the press. Lorenzen played the inbounder and then retreated. And we saw Arizona in practice looking for the loop pass. Mo got there late. And as a result of that discussion by the officials just a few seconds ago, the foul on Gary Wright was changed. It was assessed to Kevin Gamble, his first personal foul. So Gary Wright only has two personal fouls. Ed Horton, of course, has three for the Iowa Hawkeyes. And we're now in a bonus situation, one-on-one. -on -one. Again, the advantage of having a guy who can jump to inbound the ball. Pops into position, they're able to throw it, because it's awfully hard to inbound to a guard against this Iowa team. Anthony Cook at the free throw line, only one point on the afternoon, and he is not an accurate one from the free throw line, only shooting 52%. Sean Elliott, he's a good outside shooter. Lofton got the ball across court quickly. Michael Reeves into the ball game at the backcourt position. Jeff Moe. That's where they kill you. And you can see just how physically strong Iowa is. They're going after that offensive glass with a vengeance. Uh, an Ohio youngster, Brian David. I thought he got a nickel diamond there. Prefer to jump ball. Look at some scores. Kentucky pulling one out. Nipping Alabama. Ninth ranked Alabama. Rex Chapman and company out there with the Wildcats. For Iowa, Al Lorenzen, Gary Wright, Roy Marble, B.J. Armstrong, and Jeff Moe. New 45 on the kick. We saw B.J. Armstrong come in. They stretch you across the baseline, Iowa. It's tough to defend. And Brian David in at the pivot position for Arizona, giving Tom Tolbert a rest. And you talked about this pace being a blistering one, and Tolbert is going to have to take frequent breathers. It is difficult to go both ways, if, particularly if you're not used to it. And one of the concerns that Lou Olsen has about Brian David is that he has a tendency to get winded after a few trips up and down the court. So look for a lot of interchanging at the center position for Arizona. Everybody bought a program today. <laughs> DJ Armstrong, three-point attempt. Rebounded, Brian David. 31-31 ball game, 354 remaining. Still that flat, 1-2-2 two, two, or 3-2. <laughs> Should be able to get Elliott in the corner. A lot of three-point attempts thrown up by both teams already. Iowa, three of nine attempts. Arizona has tried it 12 times, and they've connected on four. Here's a 13th attempt. Should be yeah, over the top, over the back. Ryan David, that's his second personal foul. Good job of blocking out by Iowa. Greg McMillan back into the ball game for Harvey Mason. I asked Tom Davis about pushing the basketball up the floor and recognizing the defense. He said half the time we don't know what they're in. He said we try and beat them down the floor, be creative before they can get set. We heard Coach tell us yesterday that he wasn't so much concerned about what the opponent did as long as his team is perfecting what they do best. Well, that's maturity in the business, the gray hair. Obviously, when you start, you worry about the opponent. Of course, as you're in it more, you worry about what you want to do. And not as much. And of course, that's like the John Wooden philosophy of coaching. Indeed we'll it was. take care of ourselves. And, and usually talk, they did. And you talk about a successful one. Gary Wright, second free throw offering is good. Iowa on top by two. 
basketball. Today's game between the Iowa Hawkeyes and the Arizona Wildcats is sponsored by the heartbeat of America today's Chevrolet. Miller Light for great taste. There's only one light beer. And by Mass Mutual. We ensure more than lives. We ensure success. A major reason for the success that Iowa has enjoyed thus far in this season has been because of the contributions from their bench and Gary Wright has come off of the bench and contributed eight points already in the first half. His season high is 10 points. As we take a look at Kenny Lofton, working the ball up court against the press. Again, it never stops. You think you're safe? Iowa picks your pocket. Roy Marble, Gary Wright, B.J. Armstrong, Brad Lojas, and Kevin Gamble, the starting five for Iowa. Constant checking of who's in there for Iowa. <laughs> yeah, you tie your shoes when you're on the Iowa bench. You never know when you're going to get the call. But one thing, you can't be super cool against this pressure. You've got to look up and be sure of your pass. Lute Olsen with the stronger, bigger front line in there trying to contend with the more physical Iowa team. And Ryan David picks up the personal foul. That's his third personal foul, and that certainly is going to tell the story. That's a shame because he fought like heck to get good front position. Lute Olsen a little upset. Again, that inhibits his flexibility on the bench. Ryan David takes a seat on the bench as Tom Tobert returns to action. Right with his ninth point. There's Luke and Tom Davies. No strangers. Three and three against one another. I guess the programs are four and four, or four and oh, excuse me. Iowa having won four, so Luke is thoroughly aware of what this press can do to you, and he worked hard in practice to prepare for it. And you can believe that Tom Davis talked to his troops about getting a lead early and taking this crowd out of the action because they are one of the most enthusiastic in all of college basketball. 34-31, Iowa on top. Judd Bushler. Craig McMillan really has to look for the shot. He's an excellent outside shooter. He's been struggling of late. Nine for 28 coming into this game. Bushler, two-point shot. The volleyball player, huh? <laughs> he knows how to get it over the net. Kick Olympic Festival, of course. We're referring to Judd Bushler. Dad, very involved in volleyball here in America. Lute Olsen staying right on top of his team's needs as he brings Sean Elliott back into the ball game, re replacing Judd Bushler. But again, a lot of nickel dimes in there. Referees checking the peas in the whistle game. Harvey Mason into the lineup. And again, a much, a little quicker pace than Arizona's accustomed to. Again, that's why you're seeing so many players in and out. Kenny Lofton on the bench now. He's got three personal fouls, and certainly Lute Olsen is going to have to be very wary of that. That's a serious problem with this club. It's going to test the ability of Mason here, a youngster, not used to this frenetic pace, and he's going to have to make some judgments at a fast pace. Mason has been averaging only about 10 minutes a game, but he obviously is going to see a lot more action today. Roy Marble, interestingly, that's his first point of the ball game. We talked about how key a player he is for Arizona. He pushes the ball up and down the court, that being Kenny Lofton there. Roy Marble. Again, they have a nose for the basketball. And to the ball game for Iowa now, Kent Hill who without a doubt is one of the strongest Hawkeyes ever. Watch how they pry to get it inside. Gamble. And on cue, a long jumper. Tom Tolbert doing a good job of boxing out. Again, Tolbert has that Big Ten type of body, big raw bone kid who did a good job of blocking out. And the foul is called on Kent Hill, the young man we just talked about who just came into the ball game, big strong player for Iowa. The thing with Tolbert, uh, and it's, it impresses me with any player. A few years ago, Chris Mullen did this. He wasn't shooting well. He spent a week late at night he would come in and work on his stroke. Came out against Oregon, had a big game. Needs a big one today. Well, for the most part, it's been paying dividends. He's got 10 points and three rebounds in the first half. Tom Tolbert, that is. Arizona comes up with the loose ball. McMillan, three-point shot. Wow. Out of 
20 ball games this year. There's only been one game in which Craig McMillan has not scored from three-point range. Big rebound. And Kent Hill, again, using that big, strong body of his, but to the detriment of his teammates as he gets called for a pushing foul, his second personal foul. Uh, McMillan shot the ball about 27 feet before, but they are physical. And don't forget, coming up next is another edition of CBS Sports Saturday, featuring a 12-round middleweight bout between former undisputed world welterweight champion Donald Curry and undefeated Tony Montgomery. Plus, we'll have a report from the King Dome in Seattle, Washington, the site of tomorrow's NBA All-Star Game. That's coming up next on CBS Sports. Anthony Cook with only his second point. Both have come from the free throw line. Anthony Cook at 6'9", only 195 pounds, Coach Olsen trying to put a little beef on him. Gets to the pregame meal a little late. <laughs> a good left. And he connects on his third point from the free throw line. Arizona on top by three, 38-35. 114 left in the first half. And the sea of red comes to life here at McHale Center. This is Arizona's biggest lead of the ball game. Good poise, though. Gary Wright. I thought he double dribbled. Did you? He's having trouble controlling the ball again because of that injured left wrist of his where he broke three bones last year, but he's got 11 points. Because that's that tough schedule. They're used to playing the Alaska shootout, playing in the Big Ten. Under adverse conditions, they're the poised to get it inside and end up with a good try for goal. And Lute Olsen never wants to shy away from talent and competition. This is his fourth nationally ranked team that the Arizona Wildcats have faced this year. They are 0-3 against the nationally ranked teams. Of course, if you losing to UNLV, Georgetown, and Illinois. Illinois was the only team that blew them out by 19 points. They're hoping to make amends with a good showing here today against Iowa. You see the time remaining on the clock. A one-point lead being nursed by Arizona. They have to be careful for a five-second call. Good pressure here by Iowa. Not letting them get the one they want. Craig McMillan. three-point lead into the locker room at halftime. That's the end of the first half with the score. Arizona 40, Iowa 37. The College Basketball Report is next right after this message and a word from your local station. The Arizona Wildcats surprisingly leading Iowa by three, 40 to 37. We've got some other good games going on in Collin Sells down by three to the Arizona Wildcats. And, of course, Arizona was looking to try to make amends after having lost to three nationally ranked teams before. I was having a little problem scoring their leading scorer. Roy Marble only has one point. What is it? I mean, is it the Arizona defense, or are they just having a bad game? Well, when you're having a bad game, of course, you've got to attribute it to some defense. But Horton, in foul trouble, only played nine minutes. I think the key with Arizona is handling the press. My concern is, can they keep it up? I mean, you've got to be in great condition to go 40 against this Iowa team. Iowa comes into the game never having lost a rebounding battle this year. They're winning the battle of the boards, and perhaps that's what's keeping them close. Very 28-18, uh, but again, they've got to make some shots. That'll get them going. Starting lineup for Iowa, Brad Lohaus, B.J. Armstrong, Kevin Gamble, Ed Horton is in the ball game, and Roy Marble. And as you may notice on your sets at home, the fans here in Tucson stay on their feet at the start of the second half and, of course, at the top of the game until the opponents, in this case, Iowa, score a basket. That's good the Kings aren't here from Sacramento. <laughs> They'd be awful tired. <laughs> They'd still be standing. 40-37. Iowa turns the ball over. But the official says an Arizona player touched the ball. It'll go back to Iowa. Lute Olsen up. Pretty good play by Lofton. But this 1-1-3, in essence, it's a 2-3, but Tom Davis calls it a 1-1-3, has been confusing for his Iowa team. Roy Marble, again, with only one point in the first half, turns the ball over. Kenny Lofton, who's got three personal fouls back in the ball game for Arizona. Anthony 
Cook, Craig McMillan, Kenny Lofton, Tom Colbert, and Sean Elliott, the starting five for Arizona here in the second half. They really flatten out. The wing people are able to play the corner on and Iowa's defense. And it's over. He's had a strong first half. Cook keeps the ball alive. Elliott benefits from it. Well, they need some help on the glass. Nine points for Sean Elliott. He's averaging 18. Biggest lead of the ball game for Arizona. Five-point lead, 42-37. And a lot of patience being shown by Iowa right now. I think they're forced into it, James. Very active defense. Hands to challenge. Good entry pass. And Brad Lojas going up for the second shot. His third offering. Uh, is he tough? Well, he showed me something in that sequence. Tom Davis feels that Lojas is a possible NBA draft pick. He might be a year away, a year up, year away, but his aggressive play that time, the cut to get free, and the pursuing of the basketball was beautiful to watch. Lojas almost considered coming here to Arizona when Coach Lou Olson was in at Iowa who had recruited him. Kenny Lofton pushing the ball up for Arizona. Elliott from the corner. Sean Elliott excels in the up and down basketball game. I think the press is conducive to his style of play. It can really get him into the flow. Arizona moves it out to a seven point lead. Roy Marble. And the fans here in Tucson are still on their feet. Iowa has not scored yet in the second half. Kenny Lofton, three-pointer. And you might see a timeout coming from Tom Davis. If you just ask for a light beer... Give me a light. You never know what you'll get. No. Uh, what... What I wanted... Bud Light. So if you want the less filling light beer with the first name and taste, ask for Bud Light. Because everything else... is just a light. been waiting for some really big news in 4x4s, your waiting's over. Mazda's got one fantastic new 4x4. And Mazda's loaded up SE5 is also priced close to other people's stripped down 4x4s. I'll tell you, it's the best handling 4x4 I've ever driven. And I've been driving 4x4s ever since 19... Well, <laughs> never mind. An important message from American Airlines. Introducing American Super Sale. From now through May 20th, with fares from only $19 to $99, you can fly to destinations throughout the continental U.S. $19 to $99 each way based on round-trip coach purchase. Just make your reservations two days in advance and stay over Saturday. Tickets are non-refundable. American Super Sale. You may never be able to go so far for so little again. Arizona has expanded their lead to 10, and they're beating Iowa at their own game. Well, the penetration by Kenny Lofton, Tolbert rolls into that jumper, but as you noted, kept alive by Anthony Cook, and this youngster is going to be a great player, Sean Elliott. Saw him last year against Miami. He can do everything with the basketball. Very talented. Gary Wright in the middle, and the fans here in Tucson are still on their feet. Kenny Lofton up to Tolbert. Just... A, a little, little too deep, close. that's right. A little too close to the basket. Good look. B.J. Armstrong over to Jeff Moe. Roy Marble still has yet to score his first basket of the game. And Anthony Cook comes away with yet another rebound. Good Cook. Yeah. And it's 
going to be a blocking foul on B.J. Armstrong as Anthony Cook went strong to the hoop. Are they playing under the glass, Arizona? And B.J. Armstrong really paid the price that time as he caught an elbow from Anthony Cook, who was driving strong to the basket. Nothing intentional. No. Rudolph is trying to get some people. B.J. tried to pick up the charge, but they are attacking the glass. Arizona right now taking the game right to Iowa. Joe Iowa, Turner. of course, unable to score. Can't get the press set up. Sean Elliott. Joe Turner's into the ball game now for Arizona, replacing Anthony Cook. And that's the first basket of the second half, scored by Kevin Gamble for Iowa. The steal. Well, it's a, it's a simple game if you like the press. You got to ring the bell to get your people in the correct spots. All of a sudden, turns the tide. Two quickies and the steal. The foul is on Tom Tolbert. That's his second personal foul. At the free throw line, Al Lorenzen. This young man committed to Iowa during his junior year in high school. And that was for Coach Lute Olsen when he was there. B.J. Armstrong, of course, on the side, sitting next to Coach Tom Davis there. He's the one that caught that elbow, as you recall. Iowa, one of eight from the field in this half. And Lawrence misses his second free throw. Tobert. Still a 10-point lead. Make it 13. Lofton does a great job as Gamble answers. Lofton will cross-court that basketball to Elliott or McMillan. Arizona normally takes an average of 12 three-point shots a game, and already they've shot 15, connecting on seven of them. As the foul that time is being called on Kevin Gamble, his second personal foul, and he gets up slowly, walking on that right knee a little gingerly. Well, when you press, if you don't recover, you're going to get beat. You'll see Gamble trying to flick from the rear. Lofton just having to pick the dribble up. But that's great hustle. Brad Lohas got him defending against the out-of-bounds pass. McMillan, yet another one. Anthony Cook couldn't find the handle, but obviously Arizona had a good talking to in that first half, and they're doing a much better job on the boards, both boards. Well, the substitutions now. Iowa countering with a few people. Let's see if these fresh faces can ginger it up even another level. Gary Wright up strong. Probably the second strongest ball player for Iowa next to Kent Hill. 13 points for Gary Wright. Sean Elliott perhaps couldn't hear his teammates shouting at him because of the noise level here. That's, you can't relax. Lohas. And Tolbert. Near the conclusion of today's CBS Sports NCAA basketball broadcast, Bill Raftery and I will be selecting a Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each school. Kevin Gamble with three. Can't you feel the difference in the Iowa press? The fresh faces, they look like they're going after. Now, Lohas on the basketball. He'll go out of bounds if he has to. Ryan David into the ball game along with Harvey Mason for Arizona. This is the style of play Arizona like. It certainly helped Sean Elliott and Craig McMillan. Over the top, fill the lane. It's, it's just like a fast break. Elliott having a good game today. This is a 28 straight game that he scored in double figures. Jeff Moe, three-point land. He nails it. Scott Skiles would be proud of him. That's his hero. It's a 54-46 ball game, 14-42 remaining in the second half. Oh, oh, oh. And Horton, a man's rebound, decides to throw his weight around a little. Marble. And Brian David catches a hand in the face by Roy Marble. 
Roy Marble, that's his first personal foul. Marble just can't seem to find the mark on the offensive end at all. Can't get on track, but again, the aggressive play by Arizona. No question, yesterday's practice, inadvertent slap by Marble. Yesterday's practice showed me they'd be ready to play. Some people were concerned. They were into it and got a lot of things accomplished. Three on two break. Harvey Mason, way off the mark. Pass. You're right. <laughs> well, if you fill the lane, you usually will miss long. And, of course, the great hustle by one of the premier prospects in college basketball. And Harvey Mason, the freshman, will definitely tell you that was a pass. <laughs> Again, Lofton stopping, delivering, finding Elliott Mason. Good-looking pass but again getting in position to do positive things that's why Arizona's having a good ball game a light touch foul called on Ed Horton of Iowa his fourth personal foul Sean Elliott with a good ball game 14 points and seven rebounds coach Olsen is very very pleased with the kind of rebounding job that Elliott has been doing especially the last eight ball games he's been averaging eight rebounds in that stretch great defense inside David. credit that to Brian David heard that Arizona had one of the best six men in the league and in the country uh, with these fans here. Is Elliot, it? Elliot gives him a reason to cheer. Well, he can drill it out. He can bounce himself into good position. And right now, the flow going his way. Another upset in the making. A 13-point lead. Jeff Moe brings it back down to 10. Jeff Moe has 12 points. Good control. Harvey Mason, of course, as we know, Iowa, pretty good. And so is Mason's jump shot at coming back in ball games. That was Mason's problem last time. He didn't shoot it from far enough. <laughs> and Marble, not finding the range, decides to pass off two consecutive times. The second one, a mistake. Marble's having some real difficulty. Normally a 58% field goal shooter. Today, he's for eight from the field and Arizona give them credit for their defense they're enjoying a 62 49 lead with 13 minutes remaining in the first half without the clock going too far so Arizona better not be right Not only has this young man enhanced his potential professional prospects, but one of the reasons he decided to stay at Iowa when Coach Lute Olsen left was a young lady who had become Mrs. Lohas. Well, that, and that influences it. They took a walk for breakfast today, and he was a little upset. He said he thought an irate Arizona fan might attack him. <laughs> but he needed, the paper said 60. He said he needed 16 tickets. That's all he could get. No kidding. Yeah. The paper here reported he needed 60. We don't even get that many. <laughs> Not even for the CBS technician. <laughs> Again, the big guy with the arms. It's tough to see the floor. When Tom Davis was at Boston College, he had Jay Murphy, big kid who's now with the Bullets, playing the inbounder. It's awful hard to get a passing lane. I wonder at what point Iowa starts to lose confidence in knowing that they're shifting players in and out, and they still can't make an appreciable dent. On the margin, they're down by 11 points with 11.54 in the second half. Uh, again, they're the type of club, they're all confident because three of them were starters last year. They all feel as though they're starters, so I don't think you'll see them backing off. Again, with 10 players on Iowa averaging 13 minutes, as Tom Colbert takes the shot and follows and keeps it alive, you wonder what kind of effect Bill Jones not being here for Iowa is having on the team, the 6'7 guard who plays actually three positions. Sean Elliott shows that he can play the guard position. <laughs> He's got 18 points. That's his average. Iowa was a man to man. He put it on the left. This is where they run some nice things for Elliott. You're liable to see an alley -oop, a back cut with an empty side for him. He's very good against man to man. Kenny Lofton's played some pretty heads up basketball since picking up his third personal foul. That should be on Mason. Harvey got caught on the back side. Harvey Mason picks up his first personal foul. That's 14 fouls on Arizona. Mason, whose father is a jazz 
musician, famous drummer. And Harvey heard that you like music. Come over and settle on you. He only thought that because my name was James Brown, but uh, he didn't know <laughs> I could the, sing. You're not that one. <laughs> Just a 1-3-1 one, one with Lofton in the back. B.J. Armstrong, three-point shot. You really can't count a team out no matter how big the lead with a three-point shot. And these two teams have been launching them from three-point range all afternoon. And, of course, Bo, who's not in, pretty darn good shooter as well when, if they need it. Good defense here. Armstrong. Over to Gamble. Gamble connects. Oh, they make you pay for mistakes. They've got a big heart. I think somebody from the Big Ten is going to win the NCAA. What? Uh, I just have been watching games. They're so competitive. They keep going at you. The steal on the one end. Armstrong with the loop. The only pass he could make. Excellent look. Kevin Gamble running the floor well. I just think they're at a level of competitiveness. They're going at one another every evening with talent. And I, I just think by the end of the year, one of them is going to be ready to go into one of the districts and walk to that final four. Tom Colbert having some trouble getting the ball inbounds. They come up, luckily, McMillan over to Cook. <laughs> Anthony Cook averaging 10 points a game has scored nine. Arizona on top by 10 again. 10-19 remaining in the ball game. Gary Wright. But they're getting banged on every shot. Arizona reacting very well, and they're turning every press into a fast break as well. Elliott wanted to challenge Wright. But neither one of these teams seemingly have gotten fatigued at all. Well, you work hard to get fast breaks here when you go over the top of the press. You're getting, you're outnumbering the opponent and getting shots like that. You think Anthony Cook enjoyed that? Well, Arizona knows how important a win today, especially against a quality opponent like Iowa, would have on their postseason playoff hopes. Well, they've been very down about the Illinois loss, the Georgetown loss, and the Vegas loss. Play those great teams all on the road. Ball knocked out of bounds by Tom Tobert. Tobert said before the game he wasn't concerned at all that he was giving away four inches to the seven-foot Brad Lojas. Nice pump fake. Armstrong. Nice basket. Six-point ball game. Seven points for B.J. Armstrong. And I mentioned the word fatigue just a moment ago. Perhaps you would expect the pace to slow somewhat, but Arizona looks to be just a little winded. And I think Elliott held it back for that reason. I don't think he was just getting some composure. Tolbert, off the mark. Roy Marble may not be scoring, but he's doing the other things on the court. Oh, Mason. And boy, Tom Davis again working the sideline. You know, he's normally quiet, the professorial type. He's not losing touch with this game at all. That is Coach Tom Davis. His team is down by six. We'll return to McHale Center after this word from your local station. Basketball. Today's game is sponsored by Mercedes-Benz, engineered like no other car in the world. And by Budweiser, the genuine article. Beachwood aged for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. Well, the 13,000 fans here at McHale Center have plenty to cheer about. As their Arizona Wildcats are leading the nation's fourth-ranked team, Iowa, by 6, 66-60. You see the time remaining, and thus far, it's been a strong performance by the Arizona front line, which has outscored Iowa's 37-9. And who would have thought it? Not many. And neither one of these teams have been bashful about putting up the three-point shots as well. Mini run now by Iowa, 66-60. Roy Marble. Mental toughness, this Iowa team. Other good games going on around the country in college basketball. Miami down by 16 to Navy. That game late in the second half. Maryland staying within striking range of number 16, Duke. And NC State. Down by five to Louisville. Louisville, again, having a very tough year, but I tell you, they're still always dangerous. I don't think anybody want them in the tournament if they happen to get into it. 
Roy Marble, only two points on the afternoon. Both, of course, have come from the free throw line. And his third, Marble, averaging 14 points a game, is 11 under his average. You talk to pressing coaches, they almost want to give you, here's that clear out for Elliott. Good ball moving by Arizona. Sean Elliott off the mark. Here comes Iowa. B.J. Armstrong oh, over Horton. Play. B.J. on the money. Good run by the big guy, the heavyweight. Only two points for Ed Horton. What a big two. It brings Iowa within two points. 66-64. Well, to finish the thought, pressing coaches almost want to see you score. They want to entice you into trying for it all the time because they'll make you, they'll punish you for it. Both teams shooting extremely well here in the second oh. half. Oh. Lojas, talk about a high percentage shot. Roy Marble. I'll tell you, right now, Iowa's showing you what they're made of. Arizona, some composure, may have to settle a little bit, run some time and get a real good one. There were eight ties in the first half. It took us at the 8.05 mark of the second half to reach the ninth tie. And you mentioned that tough schedule of Iowa's and they're accustomed to playing pressure ball games. Again, a little confusion. Some people of Iowa were in man-to-man, -man, others in zone. Right back, Gamble. Oh. And the basket is going to count. Arizona did not even see him coming down the floor. White. Didn't turn and get set. Colbert unable to get in defensive position, drew the foul. And Coach Olsen is going to take Tom Tobert out, who picked up his third personal foul. You see everybody late in the white shirts. Well, they get it up the floor quickly, Iowa. Coach Olsen hoping that Tobert can catch his breath to give him some strong action down the stretch. 17 points on the afternoon. And Gamble, unfazed by the crowd waving in the background, picks up his 18th point. It's a 69-68 lead by Iowa. So you got to make those. Right now, Iowa getting what they want out of the speed of the game. Al Lorenzen at the point. Moves down. B.J. Armstrong, Kevin Gamble, Roy Marble, and Ed Horton, Iowa having found the mark in the midst of a 9-2 run. They've retaken the lead for the first time in the second half, 69-68. 2 three zone by Arizona. This set could help Arizona get their breath, calm down a little bit. Down to five. Five seconds on the shot clock. Marble has to shoot it, and that's his first field goal of the afternoon. Five points for Roy Marble, and it's not so much how much he scores, but when they come. Craig McMillan, three-point attempt. Iowa looking to pad their three-point lead. Armstrong on the move. And Marble with the basket. He's coming to life. Showing some heart. One and done on the defensive glass right now, Iowa. They're forcing Arizona into a one-shot game and forcing it down. Excellent penetration. Hey, B.J. showing some things, guiding this club. He's got the sight on the man. Nice-looking dish off the jump. Beautiful delivery. Oh. And Brian David picks up his fourth personal foul. Lute Olsen wants to talk it over. <laughs> Strong sports action coming up next here on CBS Sports. It'll be a big 12-round middleweight bout as the former undisputed world welterweight champion Donald Curry will be fighting this man right here, undefeated Tony Montgomery. He wants to keep Donald Curry title-less. And, of course, Donald Curry, who lost his title, is looking to regain it. We'll have a strong action coming up for you next right here on CBS Sports. Right here, we've got some great action taking place as Iowa has regained the lead, 73-68, and Iowa has found the mark. Uh, Lou Olson's club ready all afternoon to play. I think the quality bench of, I of Iowa starting to show itself. You talk about that quality bench. Iowa's bench averages 28 points a ball game, and that's up from 20 from last year. And Roy Marble has scored seven points. Six rebounds, four assists. So certainly he's come to life. If you take a look at Coach Tom Davis, 
Tom Davis told us something interesting yesterday about his substitution pattern. He says his team likes to run so much, he's not necessarily aware of what's going on with the substitution. He surprised me. He, I, even at the end of the game, he said, they can communicate with one another. I said, wouldn't you want your quality guys in at that point? He said, normally, if they're ready, they stay. But they can take one another out. Players determining when the substitutions are to be made and talk about supreme confidence that you're in control of your program. 6-17 remaining in the ball game. They've Iowa better, on top. Better stay up on Moe. He'll drill a three-er. <laughs> Jeff Moe. Well, that's 31 points that Iowa has gotten from their bench players. Arizona only eight points from their bench players. Brian David being one of the reserves for Arizona. And he nails. It's a two-pointer. 76-70. Six-point ball game. Still at 2-3 or 1-1-3. One, one, They're really spreading the floor well right now. Horton. Good rebound by Brian David as he's fouled by Roy Marble. Second personal foul on Roy Marble. And if the game slows, if the pace slows, as we take a look at this replay, that should favor Iowa. Well, that particular shot, unfortunately, there was a kick out. B.J. was three wide off, of course, the scrape there by Roy Marble, but Horton, one more pass to an easy jump shot. I talked about the pace perhaps slowing somewhat would favor Iowa because of their big bodies, and of course, a couple of the players for Arizona, Sean Elliott and Ken Lofton, as well as Craig McMillan, they prosper better in the up and down game. They're labored a little bit, though. Sean Elliott's somewhat tired. It's a 40-minute game, that's what Iowa plays. Well, you mentioned that was going to be a key at the top of the game, whether or not Arizona would have the legs to keep up with all of the shuttle substitution of Iowa. Look at the spread floor now. They're really dragging the zone out, leaving the middle open. Got to concern themselves with the deep shooting of Moe and Armstrong. Doug Moe, five of seven from three-point range. They certainly do have to concern themselves with him. Shot clock approaching the 10-second mark. Roy Marble. Steps. Pretty good looking move though. That's a house call. Showing that he hasn't been affected yeah. psychologically by his off shooting day. I, I thought he made a nice move. It's an up and under from the foul line frequently as you see Brad back in. 12 turnovers by Iowa. They're averaging about 15 a ball game. Craig McMillan, deep three point range. McMillan's 18 point brings Arizona back within three. That's Steve Kerr range. <laughs> Way out there. These fans in Tucson won't allow Arizona to get out of the ball game. Nice dish. B.J. Armstrong. Beautiful penetration. Drawing the defense. Jeff Mo. I tell you, these three point shots that are being launched they seem to be like layups for both of these teams. Well, it, I believe it should be out a little bit further. But clubs, you, the ones that are going to win are going to take advantage of the rule. Well, both teams exploiting the three-point range thus far. Three again. Elliott. <laughs> and that's a 6-8 forward who found the range for his 23rd point of the afternoon. Going to get the grab here. Over zealous in his pursuit of the basketball. Sean Elliott. That's only his first personal foul. The 1986 co-freshman of the year in the Pac-10. Sean Elliott along with Drew Richardson of UCLA. Tom Tobert back into the ball game for Brian David. An update on some of the scores from around the country. Navy again having no problems with Miami. Up by 13 points. Maryland back on top. A seesaw game there with Duke University. And Louisville, only a seven-point bolt. On top of NC State is Brad Lojas at the free throw line looking for his 11th point. He grabs it. Three for three from the free throw line. Talk about concentration in a hostile environment. 
That's not easy. All those red shirts. The trap after the made free throw. <laughs> you can see the card in the background. They call defensive number seven right now. Offensive play. Defense and offense, and they calculate during the game. McMillan. Well, he's way out. Any James? And Anthony Cook, although he comes up with that rebound, his legs are a little tired. He's not getting up quite as high. Beautiful pass by Lofton. Anthony Cook was ready to jam it before he caught it. He couldn't believe he was that no, wide open. All alone. Five-point ball game. You see the time remaining. Using a little clock each time. We talk about using the clock. Critical factors here. Both teams have two timeouts remaining. 2.40 remaining in the ball game. It's been a good up and down ball game. Both teams running hard. Arizona, again, trying to go at Iowa with their own style of play. Uh, I think Lute Olsen's got his club so prepared for this game. One second left on the shot clock. Gamble gets it off in time, right at the buzzer. Uh, good defense, still got hurt. 20 points for Kevin Gamble. And Marble comes up with the steal. Once again, the press, it's not over once you cross the timeline. I was proving that today frequently. And again, a case of a deeper, fresher bench on the part of Iowa. Nice steal there. Lofton and Elliott. Well, these Arizona kids are not giving up in the least. Good hustle by all the players. And a traveling violation called on Iowa with 1.45 remaining. Uh, Luke's sitting over there, figured, hey, we got to go out and play. He came man to man, ran a trap out of it in the middle of the floor, and continued on the Hello. line. Caused the turnover. 1.43 remaining in the ball game. Sean Elliott attempting to drive a blocking foul. is going to be called on Roy Marble. Good matchup there. Did you Three. see the reaction by Marble? I mean, he was pump faked up, almost got in position to draw the charge. Don't forget, coming up next, it's another edition of CBS Sports Saturday, a big boxing matchup coming around. From undisputed world welterweight champion Donald Curry, maybe going against undefeated Tony Montgomery. Strong afternoon for this young man. 23 points, eight rebounds, one for one at the free throw line. You might see a full court extension now after the made free throw. Of course, Mo with Iowa trying to use some clock in for the bigger Ed Horton. And Mo has shown no conscience at all in terms of launching that three point shot. I don't think he'll take many now. Arizona could use the steal now. And of course, Lute Olsen playing a little smaller too, bringing in Harvey Mason. Well, one of the other reasons that Jeff Moe has to be in the ball game is he's an 81% free throw shooter. Well, they got to get some steals. They can play smaller. Need the speed. Just one big guy, Anthony Cook in. Ball deflected by Harvey Mason. Mason trying to pull an old playground <laughs> trick. That's right. Fooling the officials, I but they were right on top it. of it. 133 remaining in the ball game. It's a five-point lead by Iowa. It's always up by Armstrong. And a bad, bad foul. Kevin Gamble trying to help out B.J. Armstrong. The best thing he could have done is stay away. B.J. had full control of the basketball. Not good judgment. Gamble, fourth Four. personal foul. Right here, B.J.'s looking up the floor to see if he should loop. It's just a leg step. <laughs> oh, Mo ahead, wide open. They could have handled it easily. Six points, six assists on the afternoon for Kenny Lofton. Make it seven points. Lofton had additional incentive. He was hoping to play well because he forgot to give an all-important phone call to someone. Yeah, well, his grandma who took such good care of him. But he has handled the ball. Now his foot speed could help with some steals. 
and it was a birthday call that he was supposed to make to his grandmother. He'd like to deliver a win as the present tour. You see the time remaining. Arizona, good reactions defensively. Iowa continues to try and run time off of the clock as Sean Elliott is going to be whistled for the foul, his second personal foul. Stopping the clock with 102 remaining. The offense defense now, Horton in for the rebounding at the far end and the possibility of a miss on the free throw. This game has got to do some good for Arizona in conference play. They're currently tied with UCLA for second place in the Pac-10. Got to be a big confidence booster. Well, physically, they proved they could play at this high pitch level. Armstrong. Three-point margin by Iowa. Mason, three-pointer. Anthony Cook with the rebound. 49 seconds remaining. And Mason in and out again. They got to look for the steal and give one. They did. Mason with two. He liked those over. Stroked Both them well. They were on the 10. No complaints. Couldn't have been any closer. You see the time remaining in the ball game. Iowa on top by three. 3rd personal foul for Mason going to the free throw line is B.J. Armstrong. He's a 77% free throw shooter. Tom Tober back into the ball game for some size and rebounding, replacing Harvey Mason. Armstrong became a starter this season. As mentioned before, when Michael Reeves went down with a knee injury, Armstrong looking for his 11th point. I love that. I've always enjoyed it. In adversity. Yeah, it's bending the knees and stroking, regardless of which team. Armstrong looking to give Iowa a five-point lead with 39 seconds remaining. It's a four-point lead still. Tolbert comes up with the rebound for Arizona. Three-point shot by Elliott. What a rebound. Uh, a strong one oh, indeed. That's a Lawrence Taylor rebound. And Horton just shredding people. I think Horton ripped the name off of the ball. <laughs> and again, you know, Tom Davis put him in. He needed some rebounds. He almost came with, up with one on a missed free throw. And, of course, a big one at that end. Tolbert with his fourth personal foul. Tom Davis looking on, staying on top of the action. Horton. 61% free throw shooter. Only two points on the afternoon. Statistics mean nothing if you make them. Horton, this is the second offering. playing for the three-point shot. Cook with the rebound. Can't buy a basket. They got the big guy over the top. Tolbert. And Tom Tolbert with his fifth personal foul. Strong ball game on the part of Tom Tolbert as he fouls out with 13 seconds in the ball game he leaves the game with 10 points and seven rebounds back at the free throw line for iowa eddie horton and keep in mind that sports saturday is coming up next a middleweight title bout between donald curry and tony edwards I think TD, Tom Davis, has himself a club, don't you? There's no here. question about it. Tough room to play in. And I think people had his team assessed accurately. He doesn't have a team full of individual superstars, but he has a good collection of good team players. And they react well, interact well. Horton looking for his fourth point.
Horton makes it a seven-point lead with 12 seconds remaining. Arizona can really grow from this game, too. <laughs> McMillan yeah. frustrated, but I, I think they're the class of the Pac-10. A lot of people might get offended. You know, Walt Hazard's club isn't playing as well as I'm sure he'd like them. This game could prove that they could play on that physical level. They're a finesse team that now their presence in Lute Olsen, I thought, had them ready for Tom Davis's Iowa club. As good as they could play. Well, Oregon coach Don Munson mentioned on Thursday night that he felt this Arizona team was on the fly right now and the team to watch, and they played well here against Arizona. Okay, time to buy some life insurance. Now, who are the companies offering whole life? I want protection plus cash value buildup. Whoa, better cut that down. So, uh, who are the top companies? Ah, that did it. Okay, now the biggie. Whose policies make more money? I want the top-rated company. Oh, Northwestern Mutual Life. Hmm, that's all I needed to know. I'm gonna give one of their agents a call. Hey, Pete. Going to town with us? Ah, go on ahead. But you're in trouble. Ah, oh, we can take care of it. A day off is something real special. But so's a good neighbor. Going into town with us, Pete? Push. Head for the beer brewed natural as a mountain stream. Head for the mountains of Bush. It began as a new way of thinking about the relationship between the automobile and the road. It evolved into an automotive suspension system like none before. The Mercedes-Benz Multilink Independent Rear Suspension System. Five individual links per wheel precisely interacting to achieve handling stability as never before. Helping to make the 300 class the most technologically advanced automobiles in Mercedes-Benz history. He had been champion of one division. Now Donald Curry takes his first step to capture another when he tries to defeat the undefeated Tony Montgomery on CBS Sports Saturday next. Iowa just seven seconds away from their 21st victory. And don't forget, coming up at the conclusion of this game here, it will be CBS Sports Saturday featuring that middleweight title bout as well as a report on tomorrow's NBA All-Star Game, the ultimate playground game. And, of course, I better mention Oregon State and Cal because I don't want Ralph Miller and Lou Campanelli mad at me. We didn't have a chance to mention it, but I think they better be ready for Arizona. It could be tough down the stretch. 89-80. Iowa pulls out a very tough win over Arizona. And the final score is 89-80. We'll be back in just a moment. This is a Hayes modem. Plug it into ordinary phone lines, and you can send financial projections to the PC down the hall. Or locate a single part anywhere across the country. Make airline reservations. Send or receive electronic mail. Or access... By 98980. Our Chevrolet most viable players of the game are Kevin Gamble of Iowa with 20 points and Sean Elliott of Arizona with 25 points. A check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated to each school's general scholarship fund to further assist qualified students in all chosen academic fields. For Bill Raftery, this is James Brown saying so long from the Kale Center in Tucson, Arizona.